Morning, YouTubers. It's a good day. My Transformers arrived. Ordered these from Edcor about two and a half months ago. There was a little delay in the shipping, and it took about a little over two months for them to show, tell me they were shipped. But given there's COVID, I'm not too surprised that this took a long time to get here. These things are huge. Ugh. There's the one of the... Um, this is this is one of the Apple Transformers, and this guy is gonna go over here. That's right, over here. Then the Power Transformer is gonna go like this. The choke is gonna go up here in the front, and then the other. Output transformer is going to go back here. And then there's a, um, this is a, a second choke that's going to go underneath this one um, diagonally like this using two of the existing bolt holes so we don't have extra holes there. As you can see, this takes up a lot of real estate. I'm going to later, once I figure out where to put the Filtering capacitors, I'm going to put the rectifier tube somewhere between the choke and the trans power transformer. So, as you can see, I've been busy drilling holes in the chassis where all this stuff is going to go. I have holes for grommets here. These are the mounting holes. I drilled the speaker jack holes in the back. And I'm pretty much ready to start assembling. One of the things I'm doing that's a little unconventional is I'm mounting the cathode resistors on the top of the amplifier. And two reasons are to let the heat dissipate out and not get underneath the chassis, get trapped underneath the chassis. And also it gives me points here to measure the voltage which can then be calculated the um the cathode current so then i know what the tube's idling at so if i start tube rolling i can see if i'm pushing another kind of tube too hard without having to get underneath the amplifier there's not a there's not really high voltage here I think, you know, it's it's not like we have 400 volts up here. Plus, I don't have any kids in the house. There's nobody else. I, I live alone, so I don't have to worry about somebody coming over and sticking their fingers in here. And they're behind the tubes. And so I don't really see that that's going to be a hazard. Plus, I think it just looks kind of cool. I've got some other gold trim stuff that I showed you in the last video that go around these things. I'm still waiting for the milliamp meter that I ordered from Germany and it's in shipping limbo so who knows when it'll get here but I can always do that later. So the on the underneath you can see here where I brought these wires through on the, the cathode resistor and I soldered them into the bottom lugs of this three lug thing here. I can put the capacitors off of this and then run these over to the tube sockets for the um, to the cathode pins on the KT88s. So I think that's going to work out really well. Again, like I showed you last time, here's my uh, power supply wiring. It's real simple. This is going to go to one of the transformer leads that comes out of this hole, and then the other one's going to go to this pin. I am going to probably run these over and back a little bit, leave some slack in them, in case I ever decide to use this uh, transformer in another build. And I'm going to be doing the same thing when I run the, um, you can see the speaker jack, holes back here now and I'm going to leave a little extra lead put a little loop in this so that 
these output transformers if I decide to use them in a different project at a later date there's still plenty of wire to them to connect them so anyway the other thing I wanted to show you guys was um, I did some research on some of the hardware that I initially picked and then got something different okay here's your Here's your basic little cheap RCA jack. And I, I thought about this, and the problem with these are that the when you take the nut off that holds them on, you're soldering to this little this little flimsy little tab here. And then it's having to make a another connection here. And you're not directly soldering the wire onto the metal the 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 metal base. So I got these that are a little bit of an upgrade. They weren't they still weren't real expensive. They were about maybe $15 for a pair and they're made much nicer as you can see they're they're a lot heavy dutier but the main thing is you're soldering the wires directly to the base of the RCA jack instead of having this crimped between there with, with this other setup if this nut comes a leaving just a little bit loose you're gonna have a bad connection on your input where on these it's not reliant on this nut to make the electrical connection. And then I just discovered the same thing. These are some really cheapy little um, speaker jacks. And they're kind of, I think a lot of amps use this size, but I use uh, 12 gauge wire to my speakers and it would just barely fit into the hole in this. Plus as you unscrew it, just about as the hole gets uncovered, it, the, this comes off. And so it partially covers up the hole even before you start threading. So when you tighten down on my speaker lead, it would only engage about maybe a thread. And then the other issue is it's got this post that holds the whole mess together that, again, it's clamping this little tab underneath this nut to make the electrical connection and so I found these and some people list these things really high like $50 a pair I was able to find a pair of them for less than $20 or a set of them and these are obviously much bigger um, much thicker nicer hardware here and again on um, when you when you unscrew this it has several threads engaged, even with this much bigger hole, is wide open. So when you're tightening this down, you're not going to have a problem with, you know, only like one th one of these threads engaged and possibly stripping it out. And then, just like this nicer RCA jack, the wire directly solders to the connector so that it's not reliant on this nut to make the electrical connection which I think will make the amp a lot more reliable even though I know a lot of amps are built with this other kind of hardware um, my little noob sound amp that I'm using right now um, it uses the, you know these cheaper kind of connections but I just felt like especially with the size of this amp it's so much bigger and these larger speaker connectors just looked more right on an amp this size in these upgraded RCA connectors I think are going to make a better product at the end. I did get this little set of grommets off of, off of Amazon and it's got all different sizes. It was about eight dollars and so that made it you know easier to get you know, the, the, if I need, you know, like a grommet this size, I need a bigger one. And on, and on these, you just start them in. 
and you work your way around it until they pop into place like that and then always look at the other side to make sure that this lip is just like this on both sides just like mark i really hate the silver hardware these come with so i got some black anodized allen bolts and then i painted the little white insulator shoulder washers black and and then on this side i used some acorn nuts and while these are really decorative, they're a little more of a pain because you have to cut the bolt to the exact length so that it doesn't bottom out in the acorn nut before it tightens up on these bells. And they don't need to be super tight, but they, they, they need to be fairly snug. So make sure that you get the bolt the right length so it's actually tightening up on the transformer bells. I also paint all of these drilled holes that I've chamfered off because this is a steel chassis. I don't want it rusting in the future. And so all this stuff, all these holes have been painted with some um, flat black, just testers model enamel. Works, seems to work really well. And I just, I just apply it with a Q-tip. And so I'm not wasting brushes or having to clean brushes. It works really well for me. And the... Schematics come with the transformers, and some of them are real simple, like the choke. It's only got two wires, but the output, the, 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 the high-voltage transformer has a bunch of different windings and colors, and this transformer has two separate 6.3-volt heater windings, and... I may end up paralleling these, but then again, I may just pull the pairs of heater wires individually like Mark did in his blue glow amp and then pair these tubes up together over here at a solder strip where I create the virtual ground. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And one of the things that Ed Core warned about and I was real careful with is they were there's a there's a warning that they'll void the warranty if you twist the wires really tight up into the transformer bell. So hopefully you can see this. The the twisting stops right here. And I used just a you know your your little monkey wrench and then twisted them like this holding it where they're not twisting up into the bell where it rips the wires out of the windings but it is a good idea to twist these heater windings that's your high voltage that goes to the rectifier tube it's 370 volt zero volts and 370 volts and then the brown is one of your 6.3s that's one of your 6.3s and then that's your 5 volt, and that's your center tap, which will be the ground, and that's your 110 or 120. So anyway, just be careful when you're twisting these up that you don't just twist them up inside there and then rip the ends of these wires off of the uh, transformer winding ends up inside the bells and destroy the transformer before you even turn it on. And they did say they'll void the warranty if they're... If they're if you return one and the windings are ripped, the, the wires are ripped off the windings inside, they don't, they don't cover that under warranty. So just be careful with that. And I guess that's it for this video. This may be a little different than some of the videos. I'm not experienced enough at doing this to be trying to film this as I'm working. And I don't want to make any mistakes. Plus, it's really cathartic and just relaxing for me to take my time working on this stuff. You know, like, you know, I spent probably an hour last night laying out these wires and deciding where, you know, that, you know, hey, let's put a three terminal thing here to, to hang the capacitors off of. And, 
you know, part of the the joy to me of doing this kind of thing is working out the best way you think of of doing this and just taking your time. I'm not in a big hurry. I'm not. This isn't a production line, and so I'm probably going to be showing videos. You know, as I complete a stage, like I'll probably get the transformers all mounted and get most of the heater winding run and get the tube sockets all installed and then do another little video showing you know my thought process on laying all that out and hopefully you'll enjoy watching as I as I go along and kind of explain what I'm doing on building this uh, single ended KT88 amp I'm really excited of course I, you know I'd love to just be turning this on and playing it but you know I'm gonna take my time and do it right so Anyway, until my next video, I am super excited that my Transformers finally came and that I can get back to building this thing, and I will see you at the next video.